uh, 34. Um, a trichelomoma. Beautiful trichelomoma. They usually have a warty surface with hypergranulosis and parakeratosis. They have these bulging reedy that push down into the dermis with smooth borders. And what you want to find ideally is clear or pale cell change. This is a really good example. Sometimes it is not so obvious when this represents outer root sheath differentiation. And you can see palisading of the basal keratinocytes. Again, just like you'd see in the outer root sheath of a hair follicle. Some people believe that these are viral and caused by HPV. And so they call them like trichelomal verrucas. They believe it's like a wart growing down into a hair follicle. There have been various studies back and forth deciding whether or not there's HPV in these. I, I just call them trichelomomas. And in the middle, they can get kind of busy and stringy and have like little cords and strands that look infiltrative. And when you have a lot of that, you can call it a desmoplastic trichelomoma, which is a totally benign lesion. The main reason we make that distinction is that if you have a, when this is really pronounced, the middle, a small biopsy in the middle of this lesion could look a lot like an infiltrative squam, squamous cell carcinoma or basal cell carcinoma. But see how it has abrupt transition here? So see, that's why it can kind of look a little bit like a clear cell acanthoma. You know, if you're, you can struggle with that sometimes because they can have a very abrupt transition. And there's the nice warty surface. I find the warty surface really helpful. And clinically, they often look like a veruca. The clinical differential is often like veruca versus basal cell. And it'll be like on the nose or something. So that's trichelomoma.